All right then, folks. So, um, hello. Look at me down here. I thought that I would do a quick recording just based off the podcast that we recently did around multi-threading. If you haven't watched the podcast, there is a link to it in the details. Um, so we were talking a little bit about some of the tools that are available to you. Now, Sales Navigator naturally is one of those tools that nearly all salespeople should, and if you don't, have in your toolkit. So we were talking about relationship maps. So here, what you'll see is I have selected Boeing, which is a brand we all love, probably all flown on one of their planes, in the aviation and aerospace. So let's just say that I am selling some HR tech. That tech has capability around managing recruitment processes, internal processes, as well as, let's say, some training and some learning and onboarding, et cetera. So I've already gone ahead and reviewed all of the potential buyers using the advanced search filters looking for leads within this account. And so what you'll see down the left hand side is all of the saved leads that I have highlighted as people I would want to meet with, gain information from, understand their needs and requirements from, et cetera, et cetera. So everybody that I believe that will be part of this buying process based on my experience of selling my product solution, et cetera. So when you scroll down now, when you're actually in the account section, you have this relationship map section, which is so great. So basically what I can then go ahead and do is I can start to pull people out. So because my solution has a learning element, I've managed to find Kirsten and she's the VP and Chief Learning Officer. Reporting into Kirsten, I have James. And then I've also highlighted that naturally human resources will be a huge uh, persona here in this pursuit. So I'm going to add Sarah. I then know that there are a range of heads of HR and directors of HR that will be influencers in this and that will be the people advising Sarah as to whether she signs off on this deal. Other elements we have are, you know, naturally, I would expect BizOps to be involved in this because of the technology element and ensuring that all of the business's operational technology works seamlessly together. And then and we'll just add in a couple more people here. So you can see that really quickly, I've managed to build out this map. I can understand hierarchies. The other thing that I can go ahead and do is actually give people a role. So are they a decision maker, champion, evaluator? Procure, are they involved in procurement, et cetera, et cetera? So I can then go ahead and start to mark who people's roles are in this particular process. So I'm going to say that these are evaluators, evaluators, evaluators. Great. The next thing that I can do is obviously we can continue to move these people around as we start to build out information. I can go ahead and remove them if I wish. Another really cool thing is that sometimes people are shared with us and um, they might not have a LinkedIn profile. Very strange, I know. But sometimes, you know, it could be Kirsten says, look, I've got James on my team, um, James A, and he, you know, he's going to be a tester. So let's call him James Ash. So I can go ahead and add him and add a role for him and then drag him around so that we're starting to even compensate for people that we might not have a lot of information on, etc. Now, where this gets even better is when you go to list view, there are quite a few more things that open up. Firstly, you have highlights. So here it will actually show, for instance, if Sarah had just joined or it was her birthday or any little kind of highlights insights would show up here. We can also, again, change their role, but we can also then add the strength. OK, so if we've met with Kirsten, I could say that that's really strong. With James, incredibly weak, not clear. And we can also then assign them to your colleagues. So if you are working with a BDR, if you know that one of your team members is connected to them, knows them, have worked with them in, in the past, you can then start to assign some tasks, et cetera. 
So this is where the relationship map really does come to life. And by doing this, by really spending that time to research, understand who's who, making sure that you're covering from end to end in the sales process, right the way from initial conversation, discovery, who's going to be involved in the solution, and who's going to be involved in the implementation and rollout, who is going to be involved from procurement, you are going to de-risk and protect the deals that you currently have in play. Also, if you take this approach when prospecting into accounts, you eliminate that risk of getting stuck with just one person and then blocking you from going out across the account. So hopefully you have found that interesting and useful and uh, yeah, keep on multithreading. <laughs>